I'm Rob Spampanato, Director of Human Resources for Rockstar. I'm Gordon Hall. I'm the studio president for Rockstar Leeds and Rockstar San Diego. I'm Josh Bass, head of art for Rockstar San Diego. What do you look for in a portfolio? And I guess we should probably divide this in a couple of sections. What do you look for in an art portfolio versus a programming portfolio? You know, we're, we're looking for the best artists out there, so an artist really can't uh, show any weaknesses. Um, we're looking for uh, clean reels. Uh, if it looks good to you, it's probably going to look pretty bad to us. So it has to be amazing. Put your best foot forward. Keep everything off your reel. What got you a degree is not what's going to get you a job all the time. So you need to make sure that once you're once you've uh, once you're putting your your portfolio together, once you once you once you have your degree, that in your head you always remain a student. You always continue learn learning, growing, and continue working on your portfolio. And you'll never you'll never get to a point in your career where where you don't have to keep the portfolio alive. So it has to be your best work always. I'd say generally when you're uh, reviewing a show reel, um, you've been captured at 15 seconds. If, if you've not got that spark already within the first 15 seconds, generally that portfolio is put to one side. We do watch out, see whether there's any progress. If, if that person comes back a year later, we'll pull the original portfolio. And that's very good because if, you know we're all on learning curves. So if you're, you know, if you're at 50%, this year, but then you're at 70% next year, we can see how fast you're growing, and that's that's quite important to us. So it is important to get your show reels into us, even if you think you've got some weak areas, or if you think you've got a lot more growth. What about um, diversity? Um, yeah, I mean, there's two main camps. I mean, uh, Josh can elaborate, but very quickly for me, there's two main camps. There's, um, there's the fantasy side, which shows creativity, and, and it shows workflow. But the problem with that is it's all about what's inside the guy's head. Quite, hot, quite often when you're working on a game you have to work with the, to a remit from somebody else's work. So what we uh, also need to see, um, and probably more importantly for a rock star, is your ability to uh, be able to generate life uh, um, animation, art, texture set, whatever you're working on, something that's uh, realistic. Uh, so we can see that you've got the ability of copy, copying a style. And I, and I also think it's extremely important for you as an artist to understand what you're strong at is, and, and that, that sometimes is a separation from what you're passionate about. If you try and put too much of too many things on a reel, it's going to dilute your strengths, it's going to expose your weaknesses, and it's, and it's ultimately going to you know, expose what, you know, lead to what Gordon was saying is those first 15 seconds, we're going to be done, we're going to you know, turn it off and move on to the next guy. So it's much better if you're an environment artist to have a, a reel that shows your strongest environment art. Not all of your environment art, just your strongest. If you're a character animator, put your strongest character animation on there and don't have it overly stylized. You want to be able to appeal your skill set to people that don't do stylized games such as us. We're not making you know, Jack and Daxter, we're making Grand Theft Auto. Um, and we want characters to walk around like, like humans walk around. Um, so understand your strengths, focus on that, be passionate about that, and, and put your best foot forward. So as far as your programming, what do you look for in your programmers, if you have that information? Uh, programming is very disciplined, and I'll bring in scripting and game design into this as well. Okay. Um, because uh, Rockstar is very heavily script oriented when it comes to game design. Um, so uh, for our programmers, we tend to look for somebody who's got a good demo. Um, and it can be very specialized, and you, we'll hire you into a role that's nothing to do with your demo. But if your demo shows talent, shows commitment, and generally shows, we can tell by looking at a demo whether that guy goes home and codes, or whether he just codes at school. It's so apparent, because when you're coding at school, you've only got so many hours in a day. If you want to be a proficient, high-level programmer, you, you, it's got to be your passion. It's got to be what you do day and night. It's got to be what you do as the love of your life. And that comes out in, in the demos. Um, the second thing that we have to that we have once we've actually seen a demo we like and we get people in, we've got to make sure that they can integrate and talk well with people. Uh, coders more than artists are all kind of uh, yeah, egotistical megalomaniacs in general who can talk to anybody and have a great time in the pub. Sometimes you've got to find you you find that some programmers are just not going to be able to communicate with people. So what we need is uh, while they're at college, the programmers need to make sure they integrate with the world and and get to the point where they can uh, hang around with the crowd get their point across, um, learn some good communication skills and generally that's 
the two things we look for, great demo and then great interview skills, kind of social uh, sociability in, in the character before we take them on.